<laughs> Thank you. There we go. That's what I'm Thank looking you, Jason. for. No worries. All right. Let's pull up our slides. Everybody let me know if you can see these just. Yeah. All right. Can everybody see that? Yeah, I, see oh, I think it. I see some nodding heads. Great. Um, so for those of you that attended last month, it, everything's going to run basically the same. We're going to have our chat box open. I'm actually going to go ahead right now and drop in the link. So if you have not registered, um, actually, let me change that. There we go. Um, if you have not registered with uh, the county for this, that's the simple survey that you fill out. And it uh, gives us the opportunity to make sure that we have your current email address and that you are being updated as necessary on the, on the project status. Um, please go ahead and go into the chat and um, click on that link and fill out that survey when you have a moment. Um, but, um, Mike just welcomed us. We're going to have some brief introductions. We're going to review for anybody that uh, hasn't been on these calls yet the who we are, who the Broadband Accessibility and Affordability Office is. Um, we're going to also have um, a storm update. Um, and then uh, we're going to move into the CenturyLink presentation on Body 2021, updating everybody on the status of that. And like last time, we're going to end with a Q&A period. Q&A is going to happen in the chat. Um, Mike, do you want to handle introductions again? Sure, thanks. Thanks, Jason. Thanks for that intro. Thanks, everybody, for being here on the second of many uh, in a series of Body 21 seminars, webinars. Uh, I look forward to the questions. I'd like to introduce Doris Carroll, who's with CenturyLink Lumen. She's joining us today, representing government affairs for the company. And Trish Sabanovich, who is the operations manager for all of Virginia for CenturyLink Lumen, and she is a, a local person here in Albemarle County, so she will be able to help answer any of your questions as we get into the deployment stage of Body 21. Uh, it's, it's important to note that um, in mid-December, the governor made a significant announcement that Body 2022 will include Albemarle County. Uh, so that's uh, this webinar is not meant to answer questions about the Firefly project that will coincide with 2021. This is specific to uh, 21 with CenturyLink Lumen and to become Brightspeed. Uh, but we'll learn more about that as the webinar goes along. Uh, we have a recording of the prior web webinar and there was much more detail um, in that than we'll be covering today. So. Uh, that link will be available for people to go back and look at the prior webinar. And as well to note to everyone who's on the webinar today, this webinar is being recorded and uh, will be available for public view. Um, the other thing we're introducing today that was a result of the first webinar is we want to invite people to participate in a technical focus group. We had a lot of questions about how do I set up my CenturyLink Lumen uh, bright speed connection at home when I receive fiber and uh, lots of questions about the deployment process itself that are more technical in nature. So we, we would like your input on that. And we're inviting people to send an email to baao at albemarle.org if you'd like to participate in that somewhat uh, subject team, more of a technical focus. So that's something that we're going to build and bring in some technical folks from CenturyLink Lumen to help us answer the more technically focused questions. So hopefully that made sense. Um, moving on to the next slide, let's keep going here. And I just dropped that note about the technical focus group into the chat. So again, if anybody would like to reach out to us, the email address is right there. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Virginia Telecommunication Initiative is a, it's in its uh, fifth year now. Um, we have been successful in Albemarle County in all five years. So we've um, submitted applications for state funding uh, to help support deployment of fiber in the rural areas, not all the way to the house, but at least to a location where people who choose to connect can connect. So it's a broadband expansion grant process, which we've been successful in for five of the five years. Um, we are learning as we go. Um, we are a learning organization here at Albemarle County and we hope to learn from everything that we do. And we 
respect the community input. So we look forward to talking with community members to help us improve. Uh, continuous improvement is one of our goals, as well as our community goal, where we are working on making things equitable and diverse, uh, providing services to people who are less vulnerable or more vulnerable um, as, as much as we can. So there are some intentional efforts going forward um, to make our efforts more equitable. Um, we're learning, I've said that before, but you know, we completed a body 2020 project with CenturyLink. We intend to take the lessons learned from that um, and apply them to our 2021 efforts. So, and the community members are part of that. If they see things that they don't think are quite right, we're open to, to hearing from you and putting your feedback into action. So if you see something that doesn't look right or have problems with the system, please let us know and we'll work with the group to try to address them as best as we can. So that's the thing that I was working on, on uh, making sure we're, we're learning as we go. So next, next slide, Jason. So one of the things that the Board of Supervisors did in budgeting process was they saw the, the need for an office to help run these types of efforts. Uh, they created the Broadband Accessibility and Affordability Office based on our mission, which is here on this slide. Um, our mission within the, the Broadband Accessibility and Affordability Office, which for right now it's Jason and myself, um, we are making sure that communities of all, community members of all means have access to adequate and affordable broadband service. The VADI 21 project that we're working on falls into our accessibility tier. So this is something that we're working on on our accessibility side. Um, we also work directly with the Broadband Authority, otherwise known as ABBA, and we are um, support for the Broadband Authority. We are not the Albemarle Broadband Authority. So there's a, a little bit of separation there, um, which you know would take a lot more time to discuss. So we're just gonna move on from that, but just wanted to clarify that the, the Broadband Office, which is our short name, um, is not the Broadband Authority. We are the support mechanism for the Broadband Authority. Jason, next, next slide. So the registration has already been uh, put in the chat. So thank you. We've had a lot of people respond to this from the first webinar. So we really appreciate people taking time out to, to give us their input and uh, provide us with emails, addresses that won't be shared for anything other than updates on the body 21. So we're committed to keeping your privacy in mind as we go forward. And um, we appreciate you providing the input that helps us you know, just look at the project from the different, the 10 project areas, which we'll, we'll talk about. And one or more of those project areas are likely to split into um, separate projects. So it's important if you're in some of the bigger project areas to stay involved with us. And uh, as we split things out, we'll, we'll let you guys know. And those schedules will be posted with the individual separate project areas. So stay with us. Hopefully it's not that confusing. So we'll, we'll get moving. And right, that, that link ahead, is going to be included, uh, is going to get dropped in the chat at the end. So if you miss it, don't worry about it. And it'll be included in future emails. Um, okay. So now we're going to have uh, Trish Stefanovic. Um, like I said, like Mike already said, this is the Vadi 2021 project. Um, we are going to have a few minutes to talk at the beginning about um, the current storm uh, impacts. And so um, if you have questions about that, we ask, you know, can you hold on to them until the end of the webinar so we can focus after this this section on the storm we can focus on body 2021 and then if we have a few minutes at the end we'll open it up for questions specifically related to uh storm issues um this is obviously the sort of thing that we're going to see more of in the future and so um those questions are important and we want to make sure that we have an opportunity to put them uh alongside all the other questions uh when that's appropriate now we're going to have that wonderful awkward transition where we Stop sharing. We close one PowerPoint and we open another. Uh, no matter how many times you do it, never get less awkward. All right, Trish, you are up. All right. 
right. Thank you, Jason. You do a fantastic job, by the way. <laughs> no one's paying attention to those few extra minutes. Hey, good morning or good afternoon, I should say. Um, thank you again for continuing to have these sessions, Mike and team. It is important that we have a strong partnership, um, not only with the county, but also with the people that are in our neighborhoods. I'm here locally in Charlottesville, so I know the importance of um, not only our infrastructure, but also when we have storm events like this, this can be very, um, you know, interruptive to our normal day of life. So Jason, if you wouldn't mind, slide to the next slide and we'll talk a little bit about what that's looked like. I think we've done that right there. Yep. And, we'll um, and real quick, time. sorry, real quick. There we go. We've got Dolores back yes. on. Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, let's step back for a moment. I'll, I'll make a quick mention. Um, I always want to kind of take a moment um, to just make sure folks understand the difference between Lumen and CenturyLink and Quantum Fiber. There's going to be some, um, we just want to make sure people hear different names. We're most commonly known as CenturyLink. That's the product that we currently sell in the market today. But our parent company name is called Lumen. So don't be confused. They're one and the same in terms of we're all part of the Lumen family. But CenturyLink is a product, um, both for our voice and our um, broadband services. But we are taking our fiber that was under the CenturyLink name and changing that over to quantum fiber. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But I just want you to be familiar with the name Lumen um, because you'll see that on the slides and kind of want, I didn't want any confusion as to um, is that CenturyLink or is that somebody else, but we are Lumen, okay? Thanks, Jason. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about storms. So our storm recovery, um, you know, as Mike shared, you know, our goal is to make sure that restoration is our first priority and part of that is working safely as well. Um, you all have probably seen on the news, you've seen uh, Dominion Energy and as well as other um, utilities working in very um, difficult conditions with downed trees, we've got power situations. So really the priority first is working in a safe environment. And in order to do so, um, utilities really get first right of passage to go through and work through their um, restoration efforts first. And then really providers like Loom and are really sort of secondary because we really do need to make sure that the power components have been addressed from a safety perspective and then we'll be able to work our efforts in there. Also you'll notice you know with the trees down, poles down, you know VDOT is working diligently to clear the roads and um, take care of our snow as well as just remove the numerous blockages we've had. So we've um, you know certainly all of these have taken time to be able to facilitate. There's a lot of ground to cover. When we started earlier uh, this week on Monday, uh, by the time we were looking on uh, Tuesday morning, we had about 29,000 uh, power customers that were out of service. And uh, as of early this morning, that was down to about 11,000. And I know Dominion has shared that they plan to try to work towards um, getting folks back completed by uh, this evening uh, as much as possible. So I think there, everybody's working, um, you know, steadfast to try to move forward and get everybody back to getting power, getting some heat and some water um, where, you know, folks need it. So um, with that, if you wouldn't mind turning to the next slide. So where we've been um, as part of this is, our central offices, our remote switches, and our devices, we have various backup methods. Our central offices have multi-day uh, coverage for major events. As you go further out into the network, our devices have uh, generally greater than a 24, and then after 24 hours, then we start having to generate both through and provide generators. So we've deployed over 40 generators, primarily in the county, covering throughout different areas. Certainly our priority is going to be the, the most amount of customers that we can um, safely get back into coverage um, so that, you know, if we can provide services, we certainly will do so. Um, we do have a couple of smaller sites that uh, we are working through right now to um, either commercial power may be coming on today, or if not, we'll be working towards getting generators redeployed. So it's, it's a constant 
moving game as commercial power is coming back on to make sure everybody gets services back up. So we're also in a difficult um, spot. We, you know, not only is it just the power to our services, but we may have instances where we've got damages related to fallen trees. Um, they may have damaged cable. We also have, um, we actually had a tree land on one of our boxes, you know, crushing that. So, you know, we just have a variety of things that we're going to have to assess as we're going through um, this week. We've started that process. It's going to take us a little bit of time. We're probably two weeks to isolate, fix, try to get the components we need to, to be back up um, where we think we'd be, you know, back into um, normal BAU. So, but we're certainly for those customers from a voice perspective, being able to have critical services, that's our first priority. Um, it will not necessarily be your HSI, but it'll be your voice being able to dial um, as we get those and we'll continue to work on the internet services. So I just wanted to let you know that um, some of the delays, by the way, also are gonna come from our um, Virginia 811. Part of the restoration efforts, efforts require us to get locates. Um, until, you know, hopefully with the warmer weather today, and then maybe, um, you know, we're going to get back cold again, but hopefully our snow will melt and we'll be able to have markings on the ground. So all of us are legally required to make sure we've got markings for our facilities so that we don't damage other utilities. So those are all, you know, we're all working in concert. Um, I think a couple of things that are good to know for just general awareness, um, you know, the FCC acknowledged quite a few years back that with technology enhancements such as um, VoIP and fiber, we weren't quite gonna be in the standalone copper service business. Um, and so that could change some of the expectations or what you might expect during a 911 uh, when you try to reach 911 during an outage. Um, the reason that is, is because we as consumers were buying digital home phones, we may have fiber services, and all of those, when they require additional electrical, they do need to have backup batteries. And typically your backup batteries will provide you 24 hours of service. Um, and, and you know that really is dependent upon your equipment, just to be clear on what you purchase, but that is the responsibility of the customer. So we do wanna make sure that sometimes folks may think that the service should be working and they may need to have a battery backup. If you do have a traditional wired phone, and you know, this is truly plugged in into a jack, then you will still be able to make those 911 calls. That is, that has not changed. It is part of the change that the industry is over, is kind of undergoing. And uh, the F FCC acknowledges that, but we are trying to make sure that customers are educated. Um, when, you, when you make a decision to purchase services from either you know, Lumen, Comcast, anybody, those are important factors to be aware of, okay? There are gonna be times, one last point that I was gonna make on an out, when we uh, do have an outage, um, if we do have fallen trees, damages, something that where we have a cut cable, even, even if we have um, a, a traditional pot sort of service, you know, if the, if the cable is cut, we certainly can't um, accommodate, you know, a guarantee on, your uh, 911 availability, um, that will require us to do a restoration. So I just wanna make sure folks are aware of that and we certainly are working to expedite those. All right, All right. well, I appreciate giving a little bit of an update on the storms and we'll certainly at the end, we can ask some more questions. Um, you know, just to recap, you know, just this is a, just an intro slide, you know, what the body program is and, just reemphasizing that, you know, we're really investing in our future. And also we recognize this is an important investment for your property value. And many of you, we enjoy the beautiful countryside here in Virginia. So we love the country, but we really do need to have good reliable, reliable services to help us be, um, have a, a strong community. So that's part of what our effort is here. Next slide. So the last time I came in December, um, we were, Mike, I think around mid-December, was it around the 7th or somewhere around there? Okay. 
Shortly after um, we came in, we had our kickoff call. We were anticipating that we would have the Jones Mill Road uh, being able to take orders in um, with a market launch date of December 31st. Shortly after we got that, um, we found out we had a couple of challenges. Um, we ended up um, unfortunately discovering some environmental aspects that we ended up having to have some delays in our construct finalizing our construction. However, we have updated that launch date to January 31st. That will also coincide with the same date we had set for the Old Garth Heights neighborhood. So those should be coming up shortly in terms of availability. The one thing also we're looking at doing in concert with Mike's team is helping to, um, for those of you who might have questions whether your home is specifically in the particular neighborhood, we're looking at doing some enhanced maps. Um, I think we're looking at first seeing if we can do sort of a, a I would say, Mike, don't get me, I don't want to speak on, uh, too much on your side, but I think we're going to try to do something that's a little bit more, you know, not exact to your street address, but, or to the street, but maybe not your house number, but you'll have a general idea of where that service is. That would be the first leg of kind of helping with those of you who might just be looking to see if you're going to be inside the body program. Longer term, I'm looking to have that be available to us in the Q.com. Uh, site that we're going to talk a little bit more about. So you'll be able to drill in and have a Google map so you can be able to take a look at that. So more to come on that, but um, we're working towards trying to help um, provide better insights on that. And Mike, before we transition, was there, is, is there anything to add to that? I think the, you know, we're working and hoping to have something from the CenturyLink mapping side. Right now, the delay there is just the request for technical assistance from the group it looks like it's out until April. So we, we may be doing something a little more interim to help support all the questions. But right now, as people submit emails to BAAO at albemarle.org or to Jason or me, what we're doing is triaging them with Dolores and other people at, at CenturyLink. So be patient with us. We just have to check with the planner. So if you email your addresses today, we will... Um, forward them on and get you an answer within two or three days while we develop some more functional and um, easier to view type maps. I think that's the best way to say it, Trish. We're still working on some advanced yeah. uh, mapping that looks like it's going to be delayed for a while. Yeah, yeah. we'll certainly try to expedite that. I, I shared uh, you know, with Mike and team, uh, we're looking to see if we can expedite, but uh, I haven't gotten a firm commitment yet, So, but that is on the radar. And I just want to, sorry, I just want to pipe in one thing. And that's just to say that the reason that we're being cautious and slow walking on this in part is because we want to be accurate. Um, we want to make sure that nobody gets a yes. Um, that turns out to be a no. Um, and nobody gets a no um, that, that turns out to be a yes without them knowing about it. So um, again, the easiest way, we're going to say it a few more times, the easiest way for us to make sure um, that we have your contact information, we can reach out to you when we have firm answers, um, is going to be to fill out that link that was in the chat, and then we'll drop in in just a little while. Thanks. So we also have another update for you. Um, when we launched with the Q.com site, that had been really targeted towards brand new neighborhood uh, developments. And so with the VADI program, we're certainly not new neighborhoods. And so we had a slight process um, augmentation that we were trying to fit VADI into. And we've come to understand that that may not be uh, a good solution for us right now. And then what I mean by that is, and um, we originally in December thought we would be able to do a 30 day in advance of the market launch so that customers could go ahead and do a pre-sale at that time. We've been able to work back with our teams and with our construction teams because we are existing neighborhoods. That format isn't quite conducive yet in the Q.com site to be able to support what we're looking to accomplish as if it were a new um, uh, neighborhood. So we need to update everybody's understanding. Um, we will not be able to um, take your information until the market launch date. 
for those orders or your interest in having um, our fiber services, our quantum fiber services. So I just wanted to make sure we had that highlighted. This is the slide that we shared and I've highlighted in yellow that particular change. So we apologize that we weren't able to facilitate that as nicely as if we were a brand new neighborhood, but I think we still have, and I'll show you some uh, slides today that where Q.com is now taking information, at least from an interest perspective. You can let us know in advance of the market launch now, but you will not be able to do a pre-sale order to request your services until market launch is actually uh, completed and launched. So last time we talked a little bit about how we are trying to make it easy to do business. I think I saw in one of the chats, Jason, someone asked about our lessons learned about oh, from the previous sites. All right. So this is one of those facets. Um, you know, we're learning to make our shopping experience for our services easier and simpler. And we know that people want to have a streamlined activity and they, if they can, they really want to do it on the, on the internet without having to engage someone if they don't need to. It's just add the product to your cart and you can turn on and off the service as you want. And um, it's really, you know, you're in control of the service. And so I think that's the great thing about our quantum fiber. We're really just making that more turnkey for you and making that simple for you. And it, not just on ordering the service, but even controlling, managing, managing it and uh, making it fit for you. So what I wanted to share today, um, you know, we had last time our Q.com folks went to it. I, I hope I don't have that repeat today. I went, uh, I tried it last night. So you're more than welcome to give me a test. And uh, if you go to Q.com, um, I'm going to show you what some of the slides would look like if you give us your information in terms of your interest. So, Jason, we're going to go ahead um, and go to the next slide here. Okay. So, what if you were in an area, and I actually did one for an address in Jones Mill. So, if you are in Jones Mill, I put in your address today. Unfortunately, we have a um, we have a data aspect that's getting worked on, but this address is, this is March 30th. That's an incorrect date. That is still January 31st. But you would see this sort of uh, today, if you go in there, you should see quantum fibers, bringing fiber internet to your neighborhood. It's scheduled to be available at this time. Those dates that you should see there are generally gonna be the market launch dates. So then to continue, if you're with it, with that's happened, then you're gonna be able to go ahead and proceed with that. Um, so this information just says, let me know. And um, it will give you, it'll start the cycle of providing communication to you about the next step and of information about the product. Um, by the way, just real quick, I think I made a note on that slide as well. If you're part of the Old Garth neighborhood, we do not have those addresses just yet. So even though you're on the same date, you will not get the same message at this time, but it will, come, it will become available soon when we get the market launch, okay? So let's say you're not part of John's Mill, you're not part of Old Garth, you're maybe in one of the other neighborhoods, but you're like, I really want to tell you I'm ready whenever you are here to give a service. Well, you can do so. Uh, in the Q.com, you can do that address, ver uh, say check availability, and it'll go for address verification. You can put in your information. I put in a, a fictitious, oh, well, it's not fictitious, it's, it's one of the addresses here in Charlottesville that does not have it. And um, when I completed it, I put my name, my email, my mobile number, and said, yes, I'd like to get some future information about it. It said success. Thank you. Um, we'll keep you interested. And also, if you um, currently are interested in other CenturyLink, may not be quantum fiber yet, but maybe you're interested in something other than our legacy CenturyLink product, you could look at offers at that time as well. And then there's always a chance someone's gonna have a new construction. Um, that could happen in a couple of different situations. You might be, let's say in Jones Mill, and there happens to be an empty lot and you're just now building that lot. And we may not at the time um, have known that there was a, a 911 address there. 
So we may ask you to do a, a new construction verification and it's gonna say, tell us a little bit more about your address. And then we may not see you, but can you put um, a pin mark as to where you're actually located? And um, it'll update the map and we'll get more information from you. We may not be able to at that time commit the order until we validate, but at least we'll have the information so that we can respond back to you. But that will be more of the exception than the rule for uh, folks. I think we, you know, generally um, these are probably going to just be, you know, a handful of individuals that are going to have these situations. And again, if you have any questions or concerns, you know, Mike and Jason have provided the information if you want to reach out to us in advance to know whether you're covered or not. Okay. So one of the things that we've also done in the last uh, month since we uh, first met, the Q.com site has had some expansions in terms of information that's available to folks. You know, you heard us talk about the technical focus group and Part of that is just helping us be better at answering your questions and providing an easy place for you to get that in one simple place and be able to reference it anytime you need to. So there is a frequently asked question section. It's right under the check availability. It says questions, viewer frequently asked questions up in the upper left corner. And it'll give you a drop down menu of options. I chose the installation and hardware in this situation. And you'll see on the right side, it starts to provide a list of different questions and uh, topics that maybe you're interested in. Jason, can you turn to the next slide? So I think on that one, I ended up saying, hey, tell me a little bit more about my modem. And so I picked up the modem and there's actually um, a page um, I think we can look at, I actually put in some details for uh, a more detailed site as well on our modems, but it'll give you information about what our modems look like, text, uh, uh, a spec sheet on it. And, you know, we're trying to make sure that some of the folks who've had more technical questions, like last time folks were asking, is there any sort of throttling on our fiber? And, you know, what's the lowest speed? You know, I, and I was sort of perplexed because we don't have it. It is symmetrical up to 940. Um, we're not doing anything to lower it. Um, that's full access to you. Um, there are some questions about, you know, do we support bridging? We do have some transparent bridging. We have controls for you. Um, they're in the advanced setup options, but we are working to try to make sure that more of the questions you have about your service and sort of the technical components, we can get maybe a small focus group together and help put that information together in a way that might be meaningful, not just for you know, um, today, but for future you know, uh, users who are interested in that information. Okay. And we also, last time, we haven't changed this, but we did have it in our deck for anybody who might have missed the original kickoff meeting. There's a lot of good information in the frequently asked questions, especially um, that we've developed in concert with Mike and Jason, just to help people understand you know, the process a little bit better. So if there's a question about the VADI program or how the process will work, let us know. We'll, we'll go ahead. I'm sure you're not the only one at, you know, thinking about that question. We'd like to take those and provide responses. And I know Jason, I think, is uh, going to be hosting these as well. So they'll be available to you to be able to reference in case you have a follow-up question. But we're certainly looking at, as this is a partnership, a two-way street, that, you know, questions you have, um, let's help get those answered and um, be as transparent as we can be to get um, you going with what you need. So We're just that is those. about all I have. Yeah, we've got different topics on those FAQs. So, all right, let's once again stop our share. So that brings us to our um, question and answer. We've got some questions that have already come in, um, and we're going to actually jump back to. Um, that first question, could Almoral County or Central Loom and talk more now or on the future monthly call about the lessons learned from Body 2020? Um, uh, we briefly covered some of this the first time and in some other communications. Um, 
But this experience that you're having right now, being on this webinar, that's one of the first things that we did, um, is that we committed to trying to have a communications approach that was going to be a little bit more interactive and a little bit more um, broad. Previously, um, there were some individual direct outreach efforts where people would actually get uh, mailers, the, you know, they might have received emails from us, um, but there wasn't an opportunity for us to actually bring everybody together and have questions answered um, as a group. So that way we could just be a little bit more broad with our communications. Um, the other thing um, that Trish mentioned is process. Um, and so from our end, um, just in collaboration with uh, Trish and Dolores and others at CenturyLink, um, we've tried to make the process as simple as possible. And a big part of that is the transition to Q.com. And um, I see we've already got some, some people reporting some issues with the website. This is a work in progress, as Trish mentioned. Um, this is a new product and a new process um, that we're kind of trying to shoehorn into an existing process. So um, bear with us. Um, we, we, we trust the CenturyLink team, in particular on the website team, to get the kinks worked out as we're good as we're going through it um so if it doesn't work for you today please feel free try it again later in the week and let us know and where necessary if you can't we will we will still work with you to figure out a solution um and then we had one question that was asked and answered in the chat so thank you guys um and that was is the launch date when the service will be available to homes or is it the date construction will begin in the in that area? Um, and this is referencing um, that transition where we said Jonesville, you moved to January 31st from December 31st. Um, and the right answer was given, but Trish, do you wanna just touch on that real quick? Absolutely, that is when you're gonna be able to place an order for your services. So we're actually um, currently with the weather and some of the uh, you know elements of rock that we ended up encountering, we're hoping to be able to finish that up uh, prior to the 31st. Uh, we do believe we're on track with that. So that is the date that we're anticipating we'll be able to open up Q.com through the Jonesville section as well as the Gilbert. Oh. And can I, can I just respond on the Gilbert station? I yes, think that exactly. Was Ms. Cindy, um, so uh, as I mentioned, you're on Gilbert Station. Um, it's not going to find it yet. You're going to have to do just the I'm interested section where you provide your name and your mobile and we'll retain that. So when we do get those addresses listed for that neighborhood, it will start the communication to let you know we've gone ahead, we're ready for you and you'll get an automated communication. I didn't include the automated communication in this deck this time, but it is available, um, Jason, I believe on the deck that I had presented in December. Right. So folks can look at that. There's a couple of different means that will communicate with you on. And um, we mentioned earlier the, um, the technical side of things. So we've got one question here um, that really drills down to um, kind of a, a, a high level question about the difference in reliability and resilience between copper networks and fiber networks. Um, that is a great question. Um, and what I think that we're gonna do because we wanna make sure that uh, that I think is a big question. Um, we want to make sure that we get you guys good answers on that one. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I think it was Mr. Ludwig, we're going to set that aside for just a minute to just uh, say, that's a great question that we're going to hold for that focus group. So that way, instead of having us try to put together an answer, we might be able to get some of the engineering staff to come in and give a clear answer either um, on a future webinar or on the website, something that we can host. Um, and I think we had a question about uh, Beam. Here it is. Uh, will the introduction of quantum fiber to an area affect the availability of beam fixed wireless service? Mike, you wanted that one? Yeah, thank, thank you, Vayton, for that question. No, it will not impact. Beam is what we consider a tertiary as well as an interim solution. Um, so it is a fixed wireless service and it will continue to be viable as long as Chantel you know, continues to uh, input investment and keep, keep that service running. So there's no intent to to draw down that service. So you're good there. Be a good backup. And if it's uh, what you're using now, I hope it's working in this uh, weather event. All right. Um, and then we've got a uh, question um, about the quantum transition. So the question is, are all CenturyLink, existing CenturyLink fiber customers being moved to quantum fiber and have they already been moved? 
They have not. Um, certainly at a point if customers um, so choose to, um, they could be. I know we have uh, and behind the scenes from an inventory perspective, we have started to move um, the inventory, but we haven't officially, I think, transitioned uh, accounts and so forth like that from a setup. Um, I think there are some activities that will come in the near future to help put everybody who has fiber services that maybe were in the, let's say the original body program where they had fiber services, um, they may be transitioned and we may get communication out to them to let them know they have the means to be able to take advantage of um, the new quantum fiber uh, controls. They are different. So this is a new platform. I, I saw someone thought that we were doing this as a beta. We've, we've been on this for quite a while. It's just that this particular platform was really geared towards our new developments. And so for the fact that we've done a brown, uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to say uh, technical jargon, but we're an existing neighborhood. So this is a little different and, and we're certainly not trying to say that this is a beta product. It's just that the process in which we're using is being augmented from what we currently use this pro this platform for. So please be patient. I, I know that we're not trying to, um, you know, say that you're uh, um, trial candidates, you're certainly not. We're trying to give you a quality professional platform to operate in and have that be easy for you to, op to operate and be able to control the services that you want, okay? But uh, we will have some, you know, learnings as, you know, both Mike and Jason have shared as we try to work our product set here into the body program. Um, and we've got another uh, service related question. This is related to uh, a, a question that was asked previously and that we, we tried to answer. Um, I'm gonna give it another go now using the context of the, of the question, the way it's asked. Um, we currently are subscribed to uh, DSL. Um, we have a certain amount promised. We usually receive a, a slightly different amount. Um, and so the question, sort of revolves around what does up to mean when it comes to uh, the 940 megabits uh, report on the on the the new fiber service um, and, and and then the the follow-on was what is the minimum speed and I'm going to try to tackle this one uh, just as a, a, a broad high level description of what it means to deploy a, a, a network of any type um, when you have, uh, uh, I'm going to use a business example, when you have a business um, and you go to uh, whatever provider and you say, I would like you guys to bring this level of service to my building, um, what they're going to be doing is very different than what they're going to be doing for your residents. They're going to be taking um, a, a dedicated line from, from, from the greater internet hub, basically, and they're going to bring it to you where every node on that, every stop along the way before it gets to your house is gonna be dedicated to it, to that speed that you are paying for. Um, that is because you're paying a lot more money than residential service, both on a monthly basis, but you're also probably paying to actually have the work done to bring it to your home or to your uh, place of business. When you're talking about a residential deployment, um, what happens is the network engineers um, actually design a new network um, and, that network is going to have nodes that terminate and from which all every, everybody else's internet is going to come off of. And so to a certain extent, you are sharing a certain amount of capacity for internet service. Um, the, the, all, all networks are designed in this fashion. All residential networks are designed in this fashion. And to a certain extent, all computer networks are designed in this fashion because you can't promise um, without a huge investment um, and a lot of cost exactly wireline speed for everybody all the time. Um, so what that provides you is hopefully affordable service um, that we can readily get to your door um, and that is going to be able to deliver speeds up to that promised speed. Now, a minimum speed, uh, I'm going to throw it to, to Trish in a second, and I think she's going to say, well, we don't have a minimum speed. But the reason that they can't describe that to you is because right now um, with everybody home, um, my gigabit speed fiber um, is probably not running at gigabit speed because there's 30 other houses nearby. Um, I share internet with about half of them. And if all of them are home and they're all watching uh, SpongeBob, then my internet speeds probably aren't gonna reach 
gigabit speeds, but they're clearly sufficient for what I need right now. And that's sort of what, as, as the, the office reach, achieving adequacy for us means making sure that whatever we're deploying, whatever we're helping to, to bring to your door um, is gonna be enough that even in busy times, you're gonna be able to do the work and do the essential things that you need to do with your internet connection. Um, and so this is that level of service where we feel comfortable saying, once you get uh, fiber service to your door, you're gonna be satisfied with being able to do what you need to do. Now, if you have an edge case and you need 24 seven, that 940 megabits per second, then I'm, I'm certain that any provider's business relations team is happy to have a conversation with you about what that's gonna take. Um, but this is residential service that is to a certain extent, it's shared amongst you and your neighbors. And so um, that, is, that is part of what, what it means to order this kind of service. Um, and Trish, like I said, I will throw it to you for what is your minimum speed? So here's what I will say, um, and I'll continue to, and I've talked a little bit about this with it as I go with our engineers, because when you order the service from us, we will guarantee when we install the service, we will actually show you the service of 940 megabits per second. We will show that that actually is, can be supported as the service that you are paying for. Um, I would have to say, Jason, more often than not with the bandwidth and the node structure that we have, I think most folks, especially what they see as different than 940, tends to be more of they're going on a wireless connection, not always wired. And I think wireless doesn't necessarily allow you for the same 940, you're going to have degradation of your service. And generally, I think most people, there's some of you that are more um, going to have your speed monitor and you know how you test your uh, your services. So when you do that, you're going to see that you might have, depending on how many devices, what you know, kind of bandwidth they're taking, you may see 880, you may see 925. Um, I don't know that, and I'll, you know, I'll do some more digging, Jason, but I, I generally don't believe we're getting, um, because of the way that structure looks, I think we're still getting really high return on that bandwidth at nine, close to 940. Our goal is to make sure that that's a 940 speed, both symmetrical uh, up and down that path. That is not controlled. It's not monitored. It's not, that is unlimited access for you. So as um, you know, I think we'll show maybe as we get more far of our technical focus group together, we'll do some more information so we can help illustrate that kind of concept to folks. So they'll have a better understanding, but our goal is to make sure that, um, you know, on a fiber, it's a different technology than a copper and or a coaxial type um, combo uh, service that has nuances in terms of up and down that are controlled, um, whereas fiber, you know, we are really just making a symmetrical service available to everybody. Um, some um, questions about how um, we're defining the project areas um, and in and out. And I'm going to uh, start with the, the, am I in or am I out um, right now? Um, if you are in the Jones Mill area um, and soon, if you're in the Old Garth Heights, um, you'll be able to at least check on the q.com website. Um, what we can offer right now, um, because again, we're working on a solution that'll make this a little bit more streamlined. People will be able to get answers um, that will be accurate um, from us, hopefully on, a, on something hosted on our website. Um, but right now, if you have a question, you're, you're uncertain whether you include it in the project area, email us, baao at um, and we will be able to verify your inclusion um, and give you an update, um, coordinating with Dolores and Trish to make sure of that. Um, as for uh, what is the plan for residences that do not fall within the defined VADI 2021 project area? So um, if you want more information in general about um, our accessibility goals, our universal access goals, you can go to our website. Um, it is www.albemarle.org slash, uh, want to make sure I've got it right. Mike, is that broadband? Yeah, slash broadband? Yeah. Broadband. Yes, um, and, it, and it, it depends. If you're a CVIC member, you know, the, the CVIC goal is to provide all of their members with right. Firefly. And it's likely if you're not in the CenturyLink Fiber Project, you will be in the body 2022. So it's universal coverage by 25 is what we're headed for. The other thing to note is Comcast. Um, so if you have Comcast available in your neighborhood, then that, that will be your option. So it, it, in other words, it depends, but we are working toward universal coverage. 
Thanks for that question. And thanks, Jason. Yeah, go to www.albemar.org slash broadband for more info. Yep. Um, and then the, I was oh, gonna, on, Jason, I was just going to mention those folks that are in Jones Mail, um, even though the date is incorrect on the site, they can't go ahead. I've, I've tried a couple of those addresses that I have on the list. And I'm seeing that come through. Now, when the record gets changed, it, you know, maybe on the day that we're making the record change, it may not be available on that day because we're trying to fix it for the correct market launch date. So, but otherwise, I think folks could go ahead and try that today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then the other thing I'll say on uh, on this project is the way that these pro projects work um, is that there are certain criteria for houses that are eligible. Um, to receive this new service through this funding mechanism. And that's what body ultimately is. It's a funding mechanism. And so if there are houses that are uh, somewhere within reach, uh, but for whatever reason, they are not included in uh, the project, then that doesn't mean that you will never have access to this resource. Um, what it means is that for this project, uh, the priority and the expectation is that the houses that qualify, the uh, locations that are gonna qualify are where uh, this project is gonna focus its resources. After this project ends, um, then there will be opportunities for, you know, potentially, and I'm not, I'm not committing you guys to anything, but after this project ends, there will be opportunities for additional expansion of whatever broadband networks that exist nearby. This project is just the homes and the locations that were selected um, based on certain criteria established in 2020 and uh, funded through this mechanism. Jason and Mike, I think it's important to know for folks that, you know, Lumen has invested money into these programs. This is not a, um, you know, they just, provided the funding to Lumen and said, here, you, you know, go um, deploy these neighborhoods. We're, in, we're invested in terms of our cash, our investments to you and Absolutely. making our communities grow. So this is a partnership. Um, yes, there is body funding, but this is because there is a cost on that in terms of just the, the territory itself and in terms of facilitating that universal coverage that Mike spoke to. There are some challenges to that and we're working together to help to overcome those. And uh, so this is an investment by both parties. Absolutely. I'm sorry. I did want to suggest that this isn't a partnership. This is absolutely a partnership and we appreciate you guys um, and the work that you're doing. Um, so we've got one last question. We've got a few more minutes. So I, I want to offer opportunities for people to ask any storm related questions. Um, but the last question that I see here is, will you put up the last timeline chart? Yes. Um, so just like last time uh, on our website, we are going to post uh, the slides that you saw today. We're going to post a link to this video. Um, and then we're also going to be updating um, the frequently asked questions section that is hosted on our site, um, which uh, again, their frequency ask question section is going to have some of those technical details and ordering details that's not going to be on ours. Ours is dedicated to that that VADI 2021 topic. Um, but we are updating both, at, or well, CenturyLink is updating as necessary. We are updating both every month. We want to make sure that the FAQ is valuable to you guys. So the questions that you've submitted, they're going to go into that FAQ too. So that way we can make sure that everybody has access to all the information they need to make good decisions. Um, and with that, if anybody has any questions about the weather, otherwise we might close and be out the door a little earlier. Um, a question from Michael, can you easily downgrade or upgrade your speed? You can, there is on fiber, you have a lower 200 megabit speed section that you can select. And it was in our presentation, there's a different price point for it. You can turn on and turn off based on your needs. Um, you know, you just select a date that you want to turn your service on or turn it off. We also, after you've had um, been on service for 30 days, you do have the ability to do vacation mode for pause it for nine months. So those are kind of nice things when folks have some travel. Um, maybe you're gone and you're not going to need it for the month, whatever the case might be. But there's a lot of flexibility in some of the, this new platform that we're offering that I think um, over time just make it easy to do business. All right. Well, it looks like we don't have any other questions coming in. So I'm going to throw it back to Mike and we can wrap up. Yes. Thanks everybody for attending. Great job, Jason, Dolores, and Trish. Thank you for doing all the updates and keeping us informed about what's going on with Central Link, Lumen, and the storm restoration. We know how important that is for people to stay connected. So 
Um, be safe, everyone. I really appreciate the time today, and we'll be back uh, on the first Friday in February. So hope to see everyone then. So thanks again for joining, and we'll be back next month. Great. Thank you, everyone. And as promised, I am dropping the link to sign up um, for make sure that you're receiving our emails. Um, so if anybody wants to go ahead and click on that before they go, we would appreciate it.